Is Jaclyn Hill lying to everyone about why her lipsticks are so hairy and gross? Find out next. Welcome back to the channel, Shakers. For those who are new, Derek Van Shake here. Jaclyn Hill is a makeup YouTuber with about 6 million subscribers and is having some serious problems with, let's just call it, uh, quality issues. When she released her brand new lipstick line, she made this apology slash clarification video, but it seemed to make everyone angrier and even more confused. So we're going to analyze the evidence along with her body language to see if she is lying. Now, let's get started. I want to address some of the issues that my customers are having with my first launch of my brand, Jaclyn Cosmetics, and my lipsticks. This is my brand reveal video. <laughs> I want you to walk away feeling like you know the product, you trust the product, and you're excited about the product. So number one, let's start with the expired accusation. My lipsticks did not go into mass production until the same month that I actually launched my brand. It was only a couple weeks before, a couple weeks prior to my launch, that we started actual mass production. She fake claps her hands twice to emphasize mass production to you. But mass production doesn't necessarily mean that the lipsticks aren't expired. There's other initial phases of production before mass production. This seems to be her way of trying to divert to try to get people to believe that they're freshly made. I remember her saying that she's had inventory, it's ready to go, but she's a perfectionist and needs to like perfect the formula. I think that she's had the stock but over time it's gotten bad. It's been years. It does smell sweet but it's not too sweet. It honestly just smells like buttery, vanilla kind of just yummy like a bakery they smell old to me old play-doh maybe that's just the scent that they were made with yummy like a bakery and because my brand has been pushed back so many times i actually already went through the same situation with a different lab several years ago i went into mass production ended up having an issue while in mass production and then didn't launch my brand and had to go to a whole new lab because i didn't want those issues to happen again so i canceled them and went somewhere else i tried to cover my tracks i f***ed up but they are not expired. There's a few interesting things here. First, I think she may have slipped. To cover one's tracks actually means to conceal evidence of what someone has done, so that person won't be found out. I think she may have thought she said to cover her bases, but when a guilty person slips, that stuff can go uncorrected because it felt right when she said it. Second interesting thing, she pushes both hands down, indicating authority, feeling like she's tamping down that claim. Seems a little odd that there was no head shake when she made her big claim that the lipsticks were not expired, but they are not expired. But there's much more substantial evidence, such as why does it seem no one's saying her lipsticks smell like a bakery, like she said, if they're not expired? Like a bakery? What we'll notice is her distracting, diverting, and omitting throughout her little apology video to downplay the whole situation. Second of all, my lipsticks are not moldy. When she starts talking about the possibility of her lipsticks being moldy, she holds her own hand, takes a deep breath, and her shoulders rise. This is self-comforting and defensive body language. This topic clearly makes her feel uncomfortable and defensive. So it could mean she knows she'll be lying about this topic. It looks like mold to me. It looks like like microspore filaments. Um, it truly looks like mold to me. Yuck, dude. There's patches of discoloration. Um, there's these things growing out. And like they're, they're not just fibers that are stuck on top of the lipsticks. Like They are literally coming out through the surface of the lipstick. They are not hazardous, they are not contaminated, they are not unsafe for you in any way, shape, or form. Gripping her hands tightly now, which moves away from self-comfort and towards apprehension. Also, did you notice she closed her eyes and her shoulders rose again? Right when she said they are not unsafe for you in any way, shape, or form? Watch again. They are not hazardous, they are not contaminated, they are not unsafe for you in any way, shape, or form. Our shoulders rise subconsciously as a defense mechanism to protect our vulnerable neck when we feel we're in danger, such as when we tell a lie. But yeah, there were some things that happened where I was like, yeah, you know, the general public isn't going to notice these little small faults, but I do and I'm not launching it. The more you would use it and those things would come out of the lipstick. So. I'm so hard on myself. I'm such a perfectionist. So I took my hand and I was swatching it on the back of my hand, picked it up, and you could see stuff coming back up to the surface. I found one really, really, really long hair. Um, 
and that it was like right underneath on the back. I'm literally putting shards of plastic on my lips. Okay, these are coming from a really gross lab, it seems like. I'm grossed out. I'm such a perfectionist. Every single ingredient in my lipstick is new and it is FDA approved. Did you catch how she tried to distract you with something unrelated to the problem? Watch again. Every single ingredient in my lipstick is new and it is FDA approved. Yes, she's telling you that the ingredients are FDA approved. So she can name drop the FDA hoping to calm people's fears and continue using the lipsticks. The safety of her listed lipstick ingredients is not the issue. The manufacturing process, that's the real issue. Those are two totally different things. It's like me cooking you an omelet in a dirty cockroach infested kitchen and then telling you that it's all perfectly safe and sanitary because the eggs, the vegetables, the cheese, and everything else that I put in your omelet was all FDA approved. Every single ingredient is FDA approved and they are not expired. I wanna ease your minds with that before even getting into all the nitty gritty stuff of this video so that you're not sitting here thinking like, oh my gosh, is it true that if I use this lipstick that it's gonna, it's gonna hurt me in some way? No, that is not the case. And now you guys have seen that, so let's move forward. No, she didn't produce anything that said her lipstick manufacturing process was perfectly safe and sanitary. She just spun everything to make it seem that way. The FDA does not proactively inspect the manufacturing of cosmetics. It's mostly self-regulated by each company based on a checklist that the FDA considers good manufacturing practices, or GMP. However, the FDA does get involved if there are a lot of health issues and complaints. It's so weird. I've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. And I've seen so much makeup. This is hairier than my leg, guys. Look at this. All right, so the first thing I wanna to touch base on are the little black dots or black holes that you guys are seeing. What these black dots are, are actually oxygen bubbles. Oh my God. That is absolutely mortifying. The second thing I wanna to touch on is the texture and the grittiness that you guys are seeing in your lipsticks. Now, although this is not happening to everybody, it's still happening. And basically what this is caused from is the humongous vats. It's almost like, I always wanna use the word beaker, but it's not like a beaker or smaller. It's like these gigantic, huge vats that are in labs. It's like this gigantic thing that holds all of your lipstick and it like spins like this and mixes everything up. That vat, is not breaking down all my raw materials because we produce so many lipsticks so quickly. Now Jacqueline just admitted to you that she's cutting manufacturing costs because instead of using smaller, better quality producing vats, which will take longer and therefore cost more, she's using larger vats, which produce more per batch, but at an apparent lesser quality. At least that's the reason she's giving everyone for why her lipstick is gritty with chunks of plastic in it. We made a lot of product in a very short amount of time Time, and although we all thought that it was gonna be perfect and fresh, that's not the case. We move too quickly, and because of that, the ingredients are not broken down. The lipsticks are contaminated. They are contaminated. There's, there appears to be little balls of plastic in them. There are hair fibers in them. There are human hairs being pulled out of these lipsticks. There are things that look like mold spores on the lipsticks. Patches of discoloration. A lot of people's lipsticks are arriving damaged, or people are swatching them, and they're literally just breaking off. They're bending. They're crumbling. They've got a really gritty texture. I will say this. You're still going to get the same effect on your lips they're still gonna give you a nice creamy formulation. Yeah, many people have used the lipstick and surely are still using it. Let's pile on 10 more layers. So thick in a bad way that it's like a workout to try to make them blend on your lips. I'm so big on packaging. When I receive a product in the mail, I'm like, packaging sucks, product sucks. It's a cheaper lipstick wrapped in a really pretty package. It just didn't feel like a really expensive lipstick mm -hmm. to me. So, yeah. It's still gonna look beautiful once it's applied, but it's not pretty to look at. And when you apply it, sometimes you can feel like a little bit of that texture and that grittiness. It literally looks like there's pieces of gravel stuck in the lipstick. So yeah, this one's definitely real gritty. Huh. What is that? So I smashed it open and that's what it looks like. So that's kind of what you're looking at. But it's embarrassing for me to not see you guys fully happy and I am so 
so sorry that any of you are experiencing anything less than absolute perfection. These are my products that I am creating. I am putting my heart and soul to. Nothing is ever gonna launch or be released that I personally have not worn, tested, and love. Like love more than anything. There's more hair. There's more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michelle, do you have I, a hairy lips? No, no, I Where didn't did that even, come from. I didn't even wear this one. <laughs> this is brand new. Yeah, see? Love. Like, love more than anything. Next, let's talk about the white fuzzies. This is the thing that gets me going. So. She wrings her hands together, indicating worry, possibly concern for whether people will actually buy this bogus explanation she's about to give. When I first heard the definition and the reason for these white fuzzies on some of these lipsticks, I 100% did not believe it. I got very upset and I was like, why are you lying to me? Why are you trying to treat me like I'm an idiot? This is ridiculous. Like I need a better explanation. But after thorough investigation, we know what the actual issue is. And I know that a lot of you guys are gonna have a hard time believing this because I did as well. This is the truth. She proactively mentions lying and then tells us this is the truth. This is commonly referred to as convincing and not just conveying. She surely knows this is a ridiculous explanation. So mentioning her disbelief is to get others to share in the disbelief with her and then hopefully buy her ridiculous explanation. Because my lipstick component is a silver, shiny, almost metal-like material, my lab, instead of using a standard glove that they would use in the lab, they decided to use white cotton gloves. They're like fluffy white gloves. I have never once seen in my entire time cotton gloves being used. They always, always use nitrile gloves. And as soon as there's a contaminant in a batch of a product, basically that entire batch is scrapped because it's not safe. Like bacteria grows, mold grows, it's it's bad. Just, just know that is not correct. Cotton gloves are never used in makeup manufacturing. You use rubber gloves, it's a sterile environment. So when you think about 15, 20 people working on a line, all replacing their gloves every 30 minutes, 45 minutes, hour, hour and a half, it's a lot of brand new, freshly white gloves coming in to that region that is spreading lint all over the product. Oh my God. There's the craziest long hair on this. You can see it right there. Look at that. That's not a fiber. That looks like a dog hair. Okay, now I'm not putting them on my lips. A huge, humongous giveaway. It's just too good not to get you guys involved. Hey look, you may be able to win some free lipstick. What is that? I don't even know. Will retail for $18. That's right, $18. That is what you are experiencing, our little white cotton fibers coming off of their gloves. This is so weird. There's like fuzzies on all of them. Like, it's, it's almost like it's cat hair. It's so gross, what the shit. How horrifying this lipstick looks. It is just covered in hair. There's hair all over the bottom of it. It's hairy. Ugh. Help me, Lord. Hmm. What is that? Oh God. And it is so beyond unacceptable. And I am so sorry this happened to you guys. And for obvious reasons, we will no longer be making any more products with this lab. After completely downplaying and omitting many of the key issues, she made it seem like all these major issues were tiny and can easily be fixed. According to her, her lipsticks are not expired. The holes are just air pockets. They smell like a bakery. They're not moldy. Any chunkiness can easily be solved with a smaller vat. She didn't acknowledge any hair, grime, or any plastic in the product. And the gloves are the ones that are just producing a little bit of lint that can easily be dusted off. And now they're using different gloves going forward. Yeah, right, she knows what's going on. But doesn't want to acknowledge any of the serious issues to not cause any more of a stir on the internet and also to protect her brand. Lastly, I want to talk about the melting issue. And even though you guys are seeing a lot of stuff all over social media, it's actually 80% of our complaints is melting. And I know it's crazy, right? You would think that like the grittiness and all that other stuff, but no, all the other stuff is only 20%. She claims that the lipsticks melting is the biggest customer complaint. Whether that's actually true or not, she surely wants to divert attention away from her sanitary issue and onto a non-sanitary issue such as melting. So many people are having these issues. How is this not at all one time ever like discovered between 
her and her team. I don't know, I don't get it. So please give your lipsticks enough time to fully cool off before you go in and apply it. And I'm so sorry for anyone who received anything less than perfect. Jacqueline's lipsticks are possibly expired, smell like old Play-Doh, possibly moldy, prone to melting, doesn't apply very well to the lips, plastic in it, black dots, and all types of hair and grime in them. I think that just about covers it. This seems like almost a joke because it's crazy. The amount of hair and plastic in these, it's just like, it's just gross. And it's, it's just crazy. It seems like it's a joke. But the crazy thing is they're still for sale and they're not truly recalled. And it's terrifying because the lipsticks are actually still for sale. Even, you know, Jacqueline Cosmetics as a company, they haven't actually pulled the product down. They haven't recalled the product. During this apology video, Jacqueline either diverts, distracts, omits information to make all of these serious issues seem like non-issues. To make it seem like the customers are are just overreacting. No, Jacqueline, it's now clear to everyone that your lipsticks are hairy, contaminated, disgusting, and you're trying to cover it up. Who, me? <laughs> also, keep in mind, if there are this many known visible issues with her lipsticks, how many unknown issues are there that haven't been discovered? Remember that before you pluck off the top layer hair and give something like that a try on your lips. Give this video a thumbs up if you think Jacqueline was deceitful in her apology video. Give this video a thumbs down if you think Jacqueline wasn't deceitful at all. Now in the comments, what would you do if you received a product like that? Would you use it, return it, complain, make a video? Let everyone know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on new body language and investigative videos where we always seem to shake up YouTube. And I'll see you at the top.